wonderful aspect of our faith is its simplicity. The kind of simplicity we saw in today's gospel. Here is a saying of Christ so rich in meaning that biblical scholars can work long and hard digging out the wealth of implications in the text. And yet so clear, so simple, that even little children can understand plainly what it means for them and for their faith. It's no wonder that Christ, the Good Shepherd, is a universal theme in Christian art. In this simple, easily grasped saying of our Lord, the entire gospel is encapsulated. Everything that Christ is and does for us is contained in this gospel. Christ, the Good Shepherd, shows his concern for his sheep by delivering them and gathering them. When our Lord said, I am the Good Shepherd, he had a definite Old Testament background in mind. The scriptures were full of references to God as the shepherd of his people. The 23rd Psalm is probably the best known. Still, it's a bit surprising that Christ should have used this analogy given what people of his time thought about shepherds. You see, there was a popular prejudice against shepherds at the time of Christ. Most people in Judah assumed that all shepherds were crooks. No pious Jew would ever consider working as a shepherd. That would be kind of like a Baptist applying for a job as a bartender. The rabbis included shepherds on their list of thieving and cheating occupations. No shepherd could serve as a witness in a court of law, since everybody knew that no shepherd's word could be trusted. And so, since the rabbis considered the job to be so wicked, they were in print why David would have called the Lord a shepherd in the 23rd Psalm. But the scriptures contained yet another picture of a shepherd in Ezekiel 34, part of which we heard this morning. God promised, I will raise up one shepherd, my servant David, and put my flock in his charge, and he will pasture them and be their shepherd. They will be able to live safely in the wilderness and go to sleep in the woods. King David, you might recall, had once worked as a shepherd, tending his father's sheep, and had fought off a wolf and a bear when he was only in his early teens. Then, Samuel anointed him to be king, and David became the shepherd of God's people, Israel. A few hundred years later, Ezekiel prophesied a new king, like David, who would be the good shepherd to the people of God. So, when our Lord called himself the good shepherd in John chapter 10, he was claiming to be the king promised by God ages before. The Messiah, the promised king from the house of David. But Christ doesn't just say who he is, he shows it. 
the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. We are the sheep he died for. At the cost of his life, he has defended us against enemies that would have devoured us. The good shepherd lays down his life so that his sheep may live. A few verses later in this chapter of John, our Lord says, I lay down my life so that I may take it up again. And now, after rising from the dead, this is, after all, the third Sunday of Easter, after rising from the dead, our Good Shepherd continues to gather sheep into his fold. He has already gathered us in, fulfilling his promise, I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them all to my voice. There will be one flock, one shepherd. I say we are the fulfillment of that promise because he was talking about gathering Gentiles, non-Jews, into his kingdom to make one church. And we heard his voice in his holy word and saw the proofs of his care in the sacraments. Christ gathered us into his fold. For most of us, that happened when we were little children at our baptism. Now we belong to him. He knows us by name, inside and out. He knows us. He knows our weaknesses and the dangers that threaten us. And he's always there to guard and protect us from all the attacks of the evil one. He knows us. And we know him. We know his love and care that we saw on the cross. We know his concern for us as he voices this gospel. We didn't get to know these things automatically. We had to learn them. Sheep don't get to know their shepherd by meeting him casually on the road. They get to know him in the fold through long association by continually hearing the shepherd's voice and experiencing his love and his protection. Ordinarily, sheep listen to the voice of their shepherd and he leads them out to pasture and back at night to the safety of the fold. Ordinarily, sheep will avoid strangers But now and then, curiosity or the desire to experience something new and different may lure them away from the safety of the flock into ways fraught with danger. That's how it is with many Christians who get bored with pure ways of word and sacrament and want something more exciting than the church's life of faith. They start looking for something new. They wander, and they may get lost, or stuck, or worse. We lived for several years in the country and had sheep as next door neighbors. And I can remember watching them one day and one of the sheep had gotten curious about what you might find inside a bucket. She may have expected to find all kinds of interesting or tasty goodies in there. She didn't find anything good, but she stuck her head into the bucket and she found out that her head was stuck. She tottered around blindly, banging into things, trying to get that bucket off her head, but nothing she could do would dislodge it. She 
she probably would have died if the farmer hadn't spotted her and come out to take the bucket off her head. That strikes me as an apt parable for how we can be sometimes. We go looking for something more exciting than God's word and sacraments, and when we find it, we discover that we only have our heads stuck in a bucket. But our faithful shepherd is always there, seeking and saving, calling us, pulling buckets off our heads, keeping us in safety. That's why today's gospel is so comforting. Not because it says how good we are. It certainly doesn't. It tells us that we're like sheep, kind of dumb, fond of wandering, getting lost, getting into trouble. But it also tells us about the faithfulness of our good shepherd. It's his love that binds us to him. Back when we had sheep as next to the we also had a shepherd. She could remember having been confirmed in German. That's how old she was. And it kind of tickled her that I was able to give her communion in German. So I would do that, you know, once a month I would go to see her and I would celebrate the communion and I would do it in German. I'd learned that my first year in the ministry at St. Philip in Chicago where I met my wife, who took the prettiest girl away when I left. But uh, I was able to do a German service. And so I did every month with this lady. And the day that she died, I took her communion. And when I was done, she looked up at me and said, Ich bin doch Jesu Lamm. I am still Jesus' Lamb. Some years later, my oldest boy started kindergarten in Rochester. Minnesota, and Mrs. Zahn, the kindergarten teacher, taught her class a song, and they came over and sang it in my church one Sunday. I am Jesus' little lamb, ever glad at heart I am, for my shepherd gently guides me, knows my need, and well provides me loves me every day the same, even calls me by my name. Ich bin doch Jesu Lamm. May you abide in the love of the good shepherd.